Welcome back. So, uh, in the previous lecture, uh, let us just recall we had defined the notion of a set. So, a set well defined collection. So, it is a well defined collection of well defined objects. We looked at uh, two important uh, uh, examples from the point of view of our subject. One was the set of natural numbers which is denoted by n and that is 1, 2, 3 and so on. Then we looked at the set of uh, integers which was, so these two dots will mean this is the defining thing also. So, n is defined to be equal to this. So, set of integers, so these are natural numbers, the set of integers is along with 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2 and so on. So, that is uh, uh, the set of integers. So, um, one could also write the set of integers as n, where what is n? n is or let us write it as uh, plus minus n, where n is a natural number or n could be equal to 0. This could be another way of writing the integers. But so, this is what is called the explicit way of writing and this is by a rule. So, let me give you uh, another example of uh, describing a set by the rule method. So, let us look at uh, the set. So, let us write the set A to be equal to all um, natural numbers. So, let us write 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. Let us look at this set. So, this is an explicit description of uh, a set having elements 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. So, let me uh, look at this. Uh, let us consider try to write it as all n a natural number such that this n is between 1 and 10. So, less than or equal to, so this is a symbol which is used to indicate n is bigger than or equal to 1 or 1 is less than or equal to n, n is less than or equal to 10. Okay is a natural number between 1 and 10 says that 2 divides n. So, let us look at this set. So, here I am picking up natural numbers by a rule. So, there are two parts of the rule namely 1 n is between 1 and 10. Okay. So, I should be considering all numbers but less than or equal to 10 and bigger than or equal to 1. So, all the numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 10 and see which one of them are divisible by 2. So, 2 is divisible by 2, 4 is divisible by 2, 5 is not, so 5 is not here, 7 is not divisible, so it is not there, 6 is, 8 is divisible, so it is there, 9 is not, so it is not there and 10 is divisible, so it is there. So, this A I can also write it as equal to this. So, this is explicit way of writing the set and this is writing A by a rule. So, we have described two ways of writing a set, one explicitly and the other uh, by a rule. So, let us now uh, go over to some other uh, uh, things we can do with sets. Sometimes one would like to look at part of a set. Okay? We have already been doing it actually, but given a set we can look at a part of it. So, such things uh, motivate one to define what is called a subset. So, we say a set A is a subset of a set B. So, we are given two sets A and B. We say A is a subset of B if every element of A is also an element of B. So, A in a sense is a part of B. Okay? So, a subset is you pick up some elements of B and 
form a new set called A. So, A is a subset of B. So, this is normally written as A with this symbol. So, this is a symbol okay, contained in or equal to. So, this is read as this symbol is read as contained in or equal to B. So, A is inside or equal to B. A is a subset of B. So, symbol means A is a subset of B or A is contained in. So, this is looking at a part of. For example, um, in a particular class, boys in that class form a subset of that class. There may be girls also in the class. So, we pick up only boys. So, boys form a subset of all students in a class. Natural numbers form a subset of integers. Every natural number is also an integer. So, natural numbers form a subset of integers. Note that every subset is also a subset of itself. Okay. So, B is also a subset of B. It, so, actually B is equal to. Okay. So, looks a bit surprising in the beginning, but it is okay. Right. So, this is a concept of a subset. A is a subset of B. In case there are some elements of B which are not in A, that means to form A we picked up elements of B, but some of them were not picked up. In that case we say A is a proper subset of B. So, what is in case A is A and B are such, such, set, uh, sets such that A is a subset of B. But A is not equal to B, that means A is a part of it, but not whole of it. Then we say A is a proper subset of B okay. and write it as A contained B. We do not put that below a equality sign, another bar. So, contained in or equal to that is this symbol right? and here is A like look like C B that is the symbol contained in A is properly contained in B. Or sometime to make it more precise, we write A is a subset of B, but not equal to or like this. So, this, this and this, there are three different ways of writing that A is a proper subset of B, but it should be understood as every element of A is an element of B that is A is a subset of B. When you want to say proper, there are some elements at least one element in B which is not in A that is a proper subset. Here is a, a unique uh, object called empty set. A set with no elements in it is called an empty set or an L set. So, it is a bag in which there is nothing. So, that is an empty set. So, an empty set is normally written as two flower brackets with nothing written inside. That means, this is a set with no elements in itself. Okay. So, clearly there is only one empty set. Why there is only one empty set? Why? Well, because there is nothing in it. So, by a vacuous statement, it is a subset of everything. Okay. So, empty set is a subset of every set. So, there is nothing to check. To check whether A is a subset of B, you have to take an element of A and show it is in B, but when there is nothing, so there is nothing to show, so it is obvious. So, that is how mathematics takes vacuous statements. There is, so there is only one empty set okay? and there is empty set is a subset of every set A. Right? Note that this is not an empty set because this is a set whose element is itself an empty set. So, this is not an empty set. It is this is not a bag which is empty. It is a empty bag with a empty bag inside it. So, you should think it that way. So, this is not an empty set. So, this is an empty set. This is a set whose element is an empty set. It has an element and that itself is an empty set. Here is a geometric way of uh, representing uh, sets, uh, which is useful uh, sometimes 
in understanding sets and subsets and various operations on sets which we are going to describe. So, let us look at what is a Venn diagram. So, to Venn diagram is a diagram which shows all possible logical relations between a collection of sets, a finite collection of sets. You are given sets A, B, C, D, E and so on and you want to show uh, by a picture a relation between these sets. Okay. So, these were uh, this method was conceived by a mathematician in 1880 called John Venn. So, Venn diagram uh, a method of uh, understanding relative relatively a collection of sets, but you should not think that Venn diagrams prove certain things. They are not proofs, they are only way of understanding things. So, let us see some examples and understand. To draw a Venn diagram, each set is represented by a simple colored or shaded circle. Right? An element of a set are written inside the circle. Okay. For example, if A and B are two sets and A is a subset of B, proper subset of B and X is an element of A, then its Venn diagram will look like. So, this will be A is a part of B. So, this is B, outside circle represents B. A is a part of it. So, it is a smaller circle, smaller circle inside B. Okay is a proper. So, it is a smaller thing, there is something left out okay. and x is an element. So, we put a dot inside A to indicate that x is an element of the set A. So, this is for A, a proper subset of B, x an element of A, this will be the Venn diagram for it. Okay. Okay. So, we will see how these things are used to understand some basic uh, operations on sets. See operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division uh, produce other numbers. So, if you take numbers, add them, multiply them and do such things, you get more numbers. right? Similarly, new sets are generated by using two or more sets by various operations. So, here are some of them. Okay? So, it is assumed for all these operations that uh, the all of the sets considered are part of a bigger set called the universal set. Okay. So, what is a universal set? That will depend on the problem, it may vary from problem to problem. right? So, in a given context, there will be a bigger, biggest set that will be called as a universal set. Okay. For example, if one is dealing with subsets of all odd natural numbers, you are trying to deal with some properties, one can take uh, all positive integers as universal set. So, there is nothing uh, specific about universal set that will depend on the problem and the concept. Okay? Or, okay. So, let us look at what is called the union of two sets. So, you are given two sets A and B, A and B are two sets. Using them you can form a new set C as follows. So, what is the new set C? C. So, if I describe all the elements of C, I would have told you what is the set C. So, C is a set which is created which contains all elements of A and also of B together. So, take elements of A, take elements of B and put them together and form a new set that is called the union of two sets and it is written as A union B. A this comes from the word union up A union B and what are all elements of it? An object X belongs to A union B if X belongs to A or X belongs to B. It can belong to both of course. So, pictorially if this circle represents A and this circle represents B in the Venn diagram, then A union B will be the portion covered by both the circles together. So, that is A union B. For example, A is a set of cow, dog and horse and B is the set of dog, ox and goat. Then what will be A union B? A union B will be all X, so that X is either a cow or a dog 
or a horse, dog is already taken care of, ox is not, so x could be a ox or x could be a goat. So, what will be a union b? It is the collection of cow, dog, horse, ox and goat. So, that is a union b. All the elements of a and b put together and written in the flower brackets, you keeping those two things to that rule in mind that nothing should be repeated. So, that is a union b. Okay. Let us look at another way, another example. Let us look at a to be the set of all x, x is a negative number. So, b that x is a non negative number. Okay. Then what is a union b? x is a negative number or it is a non negative number. So, x is the union of both that means either x is a negative number or a non negative number. Do you think this is equal to z to the set of integers? I do not think so. There is a problem here. Why? Because negative numbers mean it is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. Non negative numbers mean question comes what is a the number then? Are we looking at natural numbers? If you are looking at only natural numbers then this union is set of integers removed from it 0 is not part of it because 0 is neither negative or is not neither non negative. So, this union is not z what is it equal to? It is equal to plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 and so on 0 is not part of it. Okay. So, let us look at um, all x that x is a rational number and b x is a irrational number then what is a union b is real line. Uh, at, we have not really defined here what is a rational and irrational number probably we will come back to this example later on when we define real numbers. So, this is union difference of two sets given two sets a and b b slash a is a set obtained by removing from b those elements which are in a also. So, from b you remove elements of a. So, that means this is a set of all elements x in b such that x is not in a. So, this is called the difference of two sets b and a two, that does not mean. So, this is from b you are removed a difference of b okay, difference of a from b okay, because it should be clear b minus a means see the English uh, may cause you problem this just means from b remove elements of a. Okay. So, this is b the, and that is a this portion a point here in between here is also in A, it is in B and also in A. So, we remove it. So, what is left? So, this red part is B minus A. So, we can define A minus B similarly. So, this part right from A if I remove the portion which is common to both I will get A minus B. Okay. In general A minus B need not be equal to b minus a right and more often than not they will not be. The symmetric difference, so if you take two sets a and b from a remove b and from b remove a you get two parts and put them together take the union of them that is called the symmetric difference and is written as a delta b. So, this is a minus b union b minus a. So, if a is 3, 4, 5 and 6 and b is 3, 5, 7 and 9, what is a minus b? From a remove elements of b. So, what are the elements that you will be removing? You will be removing 3 and you will be, so from a remove elements which are also in b. So, 3 is in both, so to remove 3, 5 is in both, remove that. So, what is left is 5 and 6. So, a minus b is 4 and 6 only. And if we write b minus a, from b remove the elements of a, from b 3, 5, 7, 9, 
So, 3 and 5 are already in A. So, remove them. So, you remove 3 and you remove 5. What is left is 7 and 9. So, B minus A is only 7 and 9. Right? So, obviously, this shows A minus B is not equal to B minus A. And what is the symmetric difference? The union of these two. So, 4, 6, 7 and 9 put together. So, that is the symmetric difference. So, that is how you understand symmetric difference. Next comes intersection of two sets. So, given two sets A and B, right? we can form a new set of those elements which are common to both. So, the elements which are in both A and B is called the intersection of two sets. Okay? So, that is written as A intersection B. So, what is A intersection B? It is all x, x in A and x in A. B. Okay. So, if this circle represents A and this represents B, then A intersection B is this common portion, the red one. So, that is and this is represented by a inverted U right? and that means and. So, it should be understood as an A and B. So, elements which are in A also in B. So, for example, if a is 2, 3, 4 and 5 and B is 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, what are the common? 2 is in A, but 2 is not in B. So, 2 is not counted. 3 is in A, but 3 is not in B. So, 3 is out. 4 is in A, 4 is in B. So, 4 is in and 5 is in A, 5 is in B. So, A intersection B is 4 and 5, 2, only 2 elements. So, that is what intersection means. Okay? Next comes what is called the complement of a set. So, um, for the complement you should think of uh, a set A which is part of a universal set. So, we are given A is a set and there is a some universal set in that context U. So, then you look at what are the elements of U which are not elements of A. So, you are looking at U minus A essentially. So, elements of U which are not elements of A is called the complement of the set A and it is normally written as A with a bar up or also written as C, C is signifying complement A. So, here it should be well understood that we already have a universal set in mind or in the context. So, there is a, so, so sometimes in the Venn diagram you write this as set A. Uh, so, universal set, the square uh, area and this inside thing is, this is your A. So, what is uh, A complement? The part of the universal set which is not in A, so which is outside. So, the red portion that is a complement. So, for example, if A is a set 1, 2, 3, then you take the universal set to be 1, 2, 3, 4, then the complement is just the element 4. 1 to 3 is removed from the universal set to get the complement. So, that is the complement of the set. You say two sets are disjoint if there is nothing common between them. There is no element which is in both A and B. That essentially means A intersection B is a null set, is an empty set. So, this is what the notion of disjointness means. This is a disjoint set. So, you represent maybe there is a universal set, this is A and this is B and there is nothing common between them. So, there is a Venn diagram representation for that. Okay? So, for example, A is 3, 4, 5 and 6 and B is 6, uh, 7, 8, 9 and 10, then there is no element which is common to both. So, that is empty set. Okay? So, uh, here is uh, something which you can easily verify that a set and its complement are already always disjoint and A minus B and B minus A are also disjoint sets. There is nothing common between them. So, uh, this is uh, you can easily verify. So, this is disjointness, there is nothing common. Okay. Let us look at uh, some example to illustrate how Venn diagram can be used. So, uh, we are looking at an example of 20, there are 25 new cars at a local dealer. 
and are being inspected to see which one of them have the following three options, which car has air conditioning, has a radio, power windows. So these are the three things we are looking for in each car. And the data collected shows the following. 15 cars had air conditioning. Two had air conditioning and power windows both, but no radios. 12 had radios. Six had air conditioning and radio, but no power windows. 11 had power windows. Four had radios and power windows. Three had all three options. They was they had uh, all three cars had air conditioning as well as radio as well as power windows. So we want to analyze the question: What is the number of cars that had none of the options? That means it had neither air conditioning, nor radio, nor power windows. So to analyze this kind of problems, uh, sometimes the Venn diagram is useful. So let us. Uh, try to draw a Venn diagram for it. But before doing the Venn diagram, we will try to analyze a few other things. So how do we analyze this? Here is the methodology. So let us denote AC denote AC, the letters denote air conditioning, R denotes radio and PW denotes power windows. Right? So now let us uh, try to draw Venn diagram. We work from the center out. See there are three uh, sets here, right? cars having air conditioning, cars having radio and cars having power windows. So there will be three sets. So among three, these three sets, there is a portion where all three are present. So that is the center most part. So we will try with the center most out part. So we are trying to interpret the data in that format. So number of all three groups, that means the number of uh, cars which are all three options AC, radio and power we were given they were three. Since total power window and radio is equal to four that is the data given. Okay. So only power windows and radio but no AC is equal to four minus three that is one. Only AC and power windows is two. So only AC and radio is six. Since total AC is 15, so AC but no power window and radio is 15 minus 3 minus 2 minus 6 and that is 4. Right? So this is being interpreted from the data. So once you have obtained that, since total number of uh, um, radios, cars with radios is 12, it gets only radio but no AC and power. So 12 minus which have AC or power window remove them you get 2. So since total power windows is 11, okay, so you get power window but no AC. So from power window 11 remove AC on radio, so you get 5. So now none will be total minus the sum of the above results. So all these results are added and you get so to uh, interpret this diagrammatically, here is the diagram. So AC air conditioning and uh, right, R is the radio, PW the power window, and U is 25. So this is the universal set of all the cars. Innermost, okay, red ones are AC, radio one are blue, and green is the power window. So innermost, that is which we which have all three, that is. Uh, all three options, this number is 3. right? Those who have AC and radio both that is 6, AC and power windows that is 2 and power windows and radio that is 1. Okay? And all this put together remove and remaining is 2. So that is the Venn diagram uh, for the problem. So that is how Venn diagram is used to understand and analyze the problems. So I will stop here uh, for today. What we have done is basically we have tried to analyze uh, the operations on sets. Right? We, we looked at the operations namely of 
subsets, what is the meaning of a subset, what is the meaning of union of two sets, what is the meaning of intersection of two sets and then we looked at symmetric difference and uh, how Venn diagram can be used relatively uh, describe some sets. Okay. And caution that Venn diagram is only a way of understanding is not uh, exactly way of proving things. So, we will stop here today and continue next time. Thank you.